In today's video, we're going to peel back the curtain of the one skill that you must master. And we're also going to talk about how parents and coaches radically affect this specific skill set and what we can do to help our players ultimately adopt it and maximize it. This is X7 Hockey Talk. My name is John Swanson. and You'll see my players and alumni in the USHL playing college hockey in Division 1, Division 3, AHL, NHL, and even the Olympics. Now today we're going to really dive into not the hard skills, right? We've talked about how to shoot, um, how to fit a skate, uh, why the skating stride is, is shifted. And those are really hard, tangible things. We're gonna talk about something that's a little bit softer, but I believe it's the most important thing. And if we jump back into my playing days, whether it's playing junior A, playing college hockey, playing professionally, what's interesting is the best player on the team was never the best skater. They were never the best stick handler and they never had the best shot. They had something else. And I really look at the NHL game today, the modern game, outside of maybe, you know, Connor McDavid, who is hands down the best skater, best hands, best shot. You look at a lot of these top players. Are they really the best at all those things? Most of the time, not necessarily. They have a different skill set that makes them great. So if we go back to my college days, a good friend of mine, leading scorer on our team. Not the best skater, not the best hands, not the best shot. Yet, he would outperform many of us. Why? Well, today, we're gonna to talk about what that is. So, for us to learn or to be able to adopt this skill, let's travel to a hockey rink. A player is skating down the wall, lifts their head up, rips a shot, high over the glove. You hear the coach yell, hit the net. You hear the parents bang on the glass. Hit the net, Johnny. How often do we hear this in a rink? So often that I actually heard it last week. I was sitting at some tryouts and I was watching these, you know, nine-year-old skate and really talented player comes down the wall, misses the net. Dad bangs on the glass, hit the net. I lean over and I said, respectfully, is that what we want him to do? And the dad knew who I was, so it wasn't uh, too contentious. And he goes, well, what do you mean? I said, do you want him to hit the net or do you want him to score? And he goes, well, I want him to score. And I said, then why are you encouraging him to hit the net? Do you think he knows to hit the net? Do you think he wants to score? Well, yeah. So now let's put ourselves in the player's place. They look up and they see dad banging on the glass, frustrated, hit the net. And all of a sudden, this fear ensues on them. And this is just one moment in time. But now stack this over a player's career. And that player starts to have a decision process, an automatic de uh, decision process that is led by fear. They often make the safe play, not to say the right play. And it all comes from, I believe, ultimately the coaching and the parents. There's nothing to do with the players. Although the players can do or build some psychological defenses that allow them to be able to not deal with this, but it's hard. And so today's video is really for the coach and for the parent. Now, if you're a player, you're going to get a lot out of it, but let's jump into this. The problem I believe that we're seeing right now in the space in hockey, and you might disagree and that's okay. I respect your opinion is that we are coaching with fear. A player makes a mistake and they're waited for at the end of the bench and the coach is going to tell them what they did wrong. When was the last time that we celebrated a mistake on the ace? Hey, I love that you're trying that. Keep it up. And so there's two ways to coach the game. And what it really matters is not in the first period. It's what type of coach are you in the third period when it does matter? And all of a sudden your player makes a, a pivotal mistake and you lose the game. Are you screaming at him? Or are you encouraging them? Because your other players are watching. The parents, you're doing the same thing in the car. And so I believe the number one problem that we have right now is that the way we coach our players is leading with fear. And we're creating players that are safe players. The problem is when we play in a championship game or we get in that moment, we don't want them to be safe. We want them to maximize their skills. And so if you're wondering why your player struggles to take the skills from say Pondy or three on three, where they just look dynamic. And then they get in a championship game and they go into a shell. 
It's because of what's happening between their ears. They're scared to make a mistake. We have to ask ourselves why. Because when they were a mite, they weren't scared to make a mistake. So it's something from the environment that's imposing this pressure on them. And I believe it starts with the coaches and I believe it starts with the parents. Sorry, but let's change it. And so let's look at that top college player that I was talking about. What was the skill he had? Is that he would come down and he would turn the puck over and it could lead to a goal. And he would do two things. He would learn from it quickly. What did he do wrong? And what does he need to do next time? And then instantly he would bury it. He didn't have a forgetful memory because he learned from the mistake, but he was right back to all in. Now take another player, makes a mistake, coach comes down, unleashes on him. You got the mom and dad yelling at him in the car and all of a sudden they shell for the next two, three games. I don't know what's going on with little Johnny. He's just not playing right. Well, go back to four games ago when you absolutely broke his confidence and you led with fear. And so we have to ask ourselves, are we trying to help our players expand or contract? Because the type of language that we use with them will help them dictate that. And they're very, very impressionable right now. I believe the easiest and the biggest change that we can create for our players is one where their soft skills, the mindset, is one where they learn from mistakes, they understand that mistakes are a part of growth and they're necessary for growth because they're a great teacher, but we are not judging our players on the mistakes they made. And so when we zoom out in the big picture, and I assure you parents, coaches, your peewee game doesn't matter. Even the championship one doesn't matter. If you zoom out big enough, their hockey career is so big that that one moment in time, it doesn't matter. But if you come down on them, you will create in a moment in time that they will never forget. And so ultimately it's on the parents and it's on the coaches to create an environment where we are fostering and we are building players that are fearless, that are learning from their mistakes and ultimately able to apply those things and those lessons forward. Because I assure you, you don't want to see little Johnny playing scared or fearful. But when you're constantly yelling at them to hit the net, they want to do good by you, mom, dad. They want to do good by you, coach. I've never coached a player and I've never played with a player that doesn't want to do what's best for the team. They want to be accepted. And so when you're yelling, hit the net, or you're saying, get it out, what you're doing is you're taking them away from trying things. You don't want them to hit the net. You want them to go bar down. You don't want them to just get the puck out. You want them to make that play to spring that player for a breakaway. But the words coming out of your mouth are actually saying the opposite. And so how do we change it? How do we fix this? Well, it's not easy. Number one, I think you should share this video. It's selfish. Yes, I'm asking you to share this video, but I think more coaches and more parents need to watch this and this conversation needs to happen more readily. Second is coaches, challenge your assistants to only tell the players what you want them to do. They know the mistake they made even at a nine-year-old level. If you were to ask the player, instead of yelling at them, hey, what was the mistake you made there? They'll tell you. What should you have done? And they'll tell you. Kids are smart. They understand the game. And so one thing I challenge all of my coaches during today's tournament and today's game, can't tell the player what not to do. You must encourage them on the types of plays we want to make. And it changes the environment. It changes the bench. The third one is we coach on the bench. We don't coach from the bench. Coaches, stop yelling at your players on the ice. And I get it. I even make this mistake. It's a hard habit to get out of. But we want to create a calm environment. Get down on their level. Sit next to them. Hey, what were you seeing right there? Why did you make that play? Let them communicate back to you because that's how we create change. We have to understand what they were thinking. You just yelling at them what to do doesn't necessitate and change their thinking behavior. We have to understand how those wires are firing. When you come down the wing, what are you doing? What are you looking at? What did you see? Actually, coach, I had my head down. I was just skating so fast. I just wanted to get the shot off. Okay, cool. What should you do next time? I need to get my head up. Right? I got to take a look to see that guy was you know, wide open in the slot and I should have actually passed it. Okay, cool. Awesome. I can't wait to see your next shift. Oh, back on the ice. 
And so are we really fostering the environment? If we look at as what we do as parents and as coaches, what we want, but what we're communicating, I believe is a massive disconnect. And the number one skill set our players can have is to be fearless. Fearless of mistakes doesn't mean that they won't ever make them, but we want them to maximize their skills. And with that means they have to try new things and mistakes will happen. And we need to encourage that environment. We need to encourage it in practice, even games, and even that championship game. Because at the end of the day, it does not matter whether or not you win or lose. And I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but when we zoom out in their career, and if we have truly the best interests at hand of their development, we have to create an environment where our players play fearless. And so that's my message today. The number one skill has nothing to do with stick handling, shooting, passing. It has to do with everything between the ears. And I believe the biggest influences are the coaches and the parents. But if we can help our players be more fearless and we can create a culture around that, I believe the game of hockey will be better for it. This is X7 Hockey Talk. And if you haven't already, please give this a uh, subscribe, excuse me, and share it with a hockey family, share it with a coach. And hopefully we can create more fearless hockey players and we can watch the game become even more skilled and even more fun to watch.